Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Rotor Riot and welcome back to Learn to FPV. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of going with a bind and fly or building your own drone. So in the bind and fly world, there's actually two different ways you can go. You can go bind and fly or you can go ready to fly. And it's important to know the difference between those two. So a bind and fly is not going to come with a receiver. Jeff from the future here. So I was editing and I realized that I actually got that mixed up. A bind and fly does come with a receiver. The difference between bind and fly and ready to fly, ready to fly is gonna also come with a radio. So it's gonna have everything that you need. Bind and fly will have a receiver, but it's counting on the fact that you already have a radio. And then there's a third option called ARF or R for almost ready to fly. That's the one I was getting confused with bind and fly. So almost ready to fly means that there's no receiver on it. So the main important thing to take into account is just look at whether or not it's gonna come with a receiver or not. All right, back to the video. And also with both of those, you're likely going to have to do at least a small minimal amount of setup to get it going. So let's start with the pros and cons of a bind and fly. So a lot of times bind and fly are actually gonna be a little bit cheaper, even though they're already put together and ready to go. A lot of times by bundling parts and in some cases by cutting corners on certain components, they can be quite a bit cheaper than if you were to build your own. Now that's not always the case. There's definitely bind and flies that cost more than a drone that you could source affordable parts and put together on your own. But on average, if you're looking at putting all the parts in your cart for a drone like this versus looking at a drone that's already ready to go on like Banggood or something, you can find them a lot cheaper. Typical price range, depending on the size, let's say for like a five inch quad, anywhere from like two to 300 bucks, you can find a bind and fly. Whereas a building it yourself, you could probably still build it for around 200, but a lot of times, it's between like three and 400 because you're typically gonna get nicer parts if you're building your own. But again, not always, it depends on what you choose. Another pro to going with the bind and fly route is you're gonna be in the air faster because you don't have to take the time to put the thing together. You don't have to sit and research and understand all the parts and how they even go together to even know how to get the thing together. And you won't spend as much time shopping around for all the different parts and trying to find you know, one shop that has every part that you're looking for. So it can be a bit of a time saver. Now let's go into some of the cons. So although, like I said, a lot of times they can be cheaper, sometimes it may end up costing you more in the long run because a lot of bind and flies that I've run into with people coming into the hobby shop with problems with them, the, they can sometimes not be of the best quality control. You, sometimes they're not the most reliable. Now you can find examples both ways. I've met people that got the cheapest possible ready to fly drone they could find and it lasted a long time, they had a great time. But I've also had a lot of people come into the shop saying, I just got this thing off of Banggood and I can't get it to work. And then I hook it up and parts are faulty right out of the gate. Um, another downside is sometimes when it is a cheaper drone and the price is really low, it's because they've used components that really aren't that great and you don't want. So a lot of the areas where they cut corners are they put a really cheap camera on it, they put really cheap antenna on it, and that you definitely don't want because it's really frustrating to not have good video. The video gear is probably at my the top of my list of what I would invest money in because it's okay if it's not the highest performance flying drone when you're a beginner, but you definitely don't want to have a hard time seeing where you're going. That's just going to get frustrating. You're not even going to want to fly it. Another downside to going with the bind and fly is, at least up front and immediately, you don't really learn anything about how it goes together. Of course, obviously, that can go both ways too. So you can learn. You can take something that's already put together and look at it, figure out how everything's put together. You could even start taking it apart and putting it back together. So it's not necessarily true that you d don't learn anything going to bind and fly because you will eventually, eventually it's gonna break and you're gonna have to fix it. But you're, you're kind of taking a shortcut and you're not learning the things that you probably should right up front. Some other downsides might be, depending on which one you find, 
it could actually be a little bit harder to work on. Um, Bind and Flies have kind of gotten away from this recently, but like this one in particular, the Vortex Mojo, it's, it's really sleek and nice looking and all sealed up, but when you need to replace parts, it's actually more of a pain in the butt because being all sleek like that, everything's all kind of hidden away inside. So it's not as fun to work on. Whereas this, I can get it open and replace parts really easily. Once you do get inside and you want to replace parts, what you'll find on this one in particular is that the parts are proprietary. They're really only meant for this drone and you're not going to be able to just throw whatever you want in there with it. I think a lot of the bind and fly and ready to fly drones nowadays have kind of gotten away from that. So if you are going to go for a bind and fly, I would definitely recommend look for one that looks like it was just built by someone who put it together. It can be tempting to go for the really sleek and fancy sealed in nice looking one, but I wouldn't recommend that. It's going to be harder to work on and you definitely don't want one that has proprietary parts. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of building your own. So obviously when you build your own drone, you have full control over what parts are going to go into it. So that means you can choose things that are in your price range or the most highest performance parts. It means that you can choose things that you know your favorite store or local hobby shop maybe has those parts. So it'll be really easy to find and replace them again later. Another thing is you're gonna learn all those skills that you need to put this thing together up front. So that way, once you do break it and crash it, you're not stressed out. You put it together the first time, so you know how to take it back apart, you know how to replace those parts. Not always, but usually, when you do pick all your own parts, you put it together, you've learned all the skills of how to get it set up and tuned right, you're usually gonna get a little bit better performance out of this than a bind and fly out of the box. It's not always true. A lot, some there's definitely bind and flies that have good parts and they can be tuned up and fly just as well. But it's just, I would, I would lean a little more towards you're probably going to get a little bit overall better drone if you build it yourself. Some of the downsides are, while a lot of the people I've met in this hobby they absolutely love building and repairing and tinkering with their drone. That's not for everyone. Some people just hate having to work on it. And while it's kind of inevitable, maybe for some people they wanna do it as minimal as possible. So they'd rather just buy a bind and fly. If something breaks, they'll either just, you know, just fix that one thing. Maybe they have a friend or a shop they can go to to have them do their work for them. And there's really no shame in that. It's not for everybody. Like maybe some people just like to fly, they don't wanna work on it so much, it, that's okay. But a lot of other people, they love to build. So it just kind of depends on you. Another downside is maybe it's a little too expensive to build your own drone. So like I said, you can probably put your own together for just as cheap as most of the cheapest bind and flies, but maybe even that is too much. So maybe you're gonna go for a micro. And in the micro world, it's, it's probably a lot less common to actually build your own. If we're talking two inch props or smaller, it's almost a no brainer to go for a bind and fly. They're small, they'd be tedious to put together, and there's a lot of good companies making really good micro bind and flies. So if, so if like 200 bucks for a drone is out of your budget, then you're most likely going to go bind and fly and you're probably going to go for a micro. Another thing to keep in mind is where are you getting the drone from? So there's a bunch of cheap Chinese websites where you can get a ton of different bind and fly and ready to fly drones but they don't really discriminate. So some of them are gonna be really good, a really great deal, they're gonna perform really well, but they're right next to some that are just subpar components, the quality control isn't there, and they really just don't discriminate. So unless you do a lot of research and asking around, you're not gonna really know which one, I, which one you should get and which one you should probably stay away from. If you go to our store, or Race Day Quads, or Get FPV, Pyroflip, if you go to a known trusted FPV store and look through their ready to fly and bind the flies, you're more likely to get one that's has a good reputation that's gonna be more solid for you. Uh, a couple companies that I know make really good bind and flies are Emacs. Uh, there's a Holyboro Copus, that one's really nice. Uh, HDLRC makes good ones. So if you do wanna save some money and try to go for the you know direct from China route, I mean, I hate to say it, but one thing you could do, go to our store, go to Get FPV, look at, look at the things they have and see if you can find a similar one elsewhere, but for cheaper. 
I would much rather you spend the money with us, but if your budget is low, you need to get the cheapest thing. Just take your time, do your research, figure out what's good, figure out the best price. You're probably gonna have to wait a little longer for it to ship, but whatever gets you in the air, that's what it's all about. And finally, the main thing to remember is no matter which way you go, whether you're gonna build it yourself, you're just gonna buy a drone and fly it, you're never really just gonna buy a drone and fly it. There's always gonna be some level of knowledge that you have to do. I don't think any drone is gonna come, I mean, unless you buy the whole thing ready to go, there's actually some shops that will build everything for you, bind it up to a radio and mail it out to you. You take it out of the box and play with it. But almost always, you're gonna have to at least bind it you're gonna to have to do some very minimal beta flight setup. You're gonna to have to go in there and assign which switch is gonna make the thing take off. You're gonna to have to, you, it's smart to go in and confirm the sticks are moving the right way. You don't wanna find that out by having the thing flip into your face. You wanna at least know the base amount of knowledge that it's gonna be safe to take this thing off. If you are shopping around for bind and flies, I would definitely recommend go to their product page and go down and look for their component list. So this might not mean a whole lot to you if you're super duper new, but you want to know what's actually in it. So once you know that, and if, even if you don't know what each thing is, you can get online and ask around. You don't want to buy something that has junk components in it and then have to replace them later because it's just going to end up costing you more. Look for price, but don't get the absolute cheapest thing. Understand what components are in it. Make sure you don't get anything that's totally proprietary and other parts won't work and you won't be able to use those parts on anything else. And if you can, look for reviews, look for people that have bought it and had it for a while and try to gauge how many people are happy versus how many people are frustrated with it. So with that, thanks for watching. I hope this gave you guys a little bit more info on which route is going to be right for you. And this has been Learn to FPV.